After watching Spy X Family, I want to show you how to be like Mr. Lloyd Forger, aka Twilight. Before I begin, if you enjoyed this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe and drop any new ideas that you want to see next. A spy is a person who secretly collects and reports information on the activities, movements, and plans of an enemy or competitor. There seems to be five designations of spies, according to a short-form article based off of the Art of War. 1. A local spy, someone recruited from the surrounding area. 2. An inside spy, someone that has infiltrated the enemy ranks. They may also be called moles. 3. A reverse spy, a spy that has come over to the other side, aka double agent. 4. A dead spy. A spy that has been identified as a spy and fed false information to trick the enemy. They're called dead spies because when the employer finds out, they're probably going to be killed. The fifth and final spy is a living spy, which is a spy that comes back and reports the info they gathered. By the way, spying is illegal for the most part, so unless you're trying to have fun with this, I don't recommend really doing it for a serious reason. First is training, which includes both physical and mental exercises. For physical exercises, you don't have to be an Olympic athlete, though that could be even better. But you should be physically fit, that would allow you to adapt to the scenario at hand. Examples include being able to fight, run, climb, swim, etc. Check out the Heavenly Martial Body Method or the Turtle Hermit Training Method for specifics. As for mental exercises, the first part is to raise your intelligence like in a video game by learning and using new skills, solving puzzles, both to keep your mind sharp and to better adapt to each new mission, which may require knowledge on a specific topic or topics. Essentially, you want to be well educated, and that doesn't necessarily mean having a degree or certificate, though that could certainly help. In this case, it's to be knowledgeable in as many subjects as possible. So having experience or a degree in a valuable field of expertise, engineering, medicine, IT, etc. due to the technical value you bring. Along with this, you want to be well versed in other topics as well, such as other fields of study, politics, stocks, current events, music, movies, TV shows, sports, celebrity gossip, and anything else that pertains to the region you're working in. The latter allows a spy to better fit in to the enemy environment and make their co-workers and neighbors more comfortable and easier to siphon info from. Now having the ability to remember all this knowledge, especially the ones that require specific details, can be difficult. So using numerous memorization and studying techniques that work for you is essential. It's also important because along with all that information you memorized previously, You'll also need to memorize the info you gather from the target, making sure it's concise and correct. And since it's weird to pull out a notepad each time you talk in a public environment, memorizing is a key aspect that becomes very crucial. The video How to Be Sean Spencer discusses different memorization techniques and exercises, so you can watch that for some context. Another focus is improving one's mental toughness as being able to stay calm in a stressful situation is very important. Cracking under pressure, especially in a hostile environment as a spy, can make you look suspicious. For example, your lies start to get tangled up and your story starts to break, and you start getting nervous when there isn't a reason to be. To make sure this doesn't happen at all or even often, you want to perform tasks that you dislike but may be helpful to improve your mental toughness. Basic training performed by the military for new cadets is a great example of building both a physical foundation and more importantly, the mental toughness that I was talking about. Cadets are being emotionally, mentally, and physically taxed but are expected to perform perfectly while under this pressure. You may be able to simulate this with a paid for program like SEAL Fit or actually joining the military. But if that isn't an option, you need to personally push yourself, such as cold showers, working out without any music, or with a lack of sleep, finishing a task that you're procrastinating on by setting personal deadlines, 
and more that you can find by looking it up on the internet. The next skill is lying, which is going to be in use pretty much all the time when speaking to anyone and everyone as a spy. To be a good liar, confidence is key, both verbally and non-verbally. Changes in pitch, stuttering, gaze avoidance, fidgeting, foot tapping, etc. may indicate to others that you're nervous and or lying. You want to make up simple lies, keep to the story, have some truth in it, and memorize a lie. And these are just some ways to keep your lies straight. There are many articles and videos discussing more specifics that you can also check out. I believe acting classes can be beneficial as it can assist with public speaking, changing characters, memorizing lines, and it's useful to have someone there to correct any non-verbal or verbal mistakes you make. For example, someone asks you or makes you write down your name, address, and number. For the name, you want to give a very common name so if they look it up, there will be way too many results to go through. For the address, it should be a real place, preferably an apartment complex or residential area. And for the number, it would be best to buy a burner phone, like a flip phone, and give that number. Finally, a couple of miscellaneous advice. You want to dress appropriately for the occasion. Review topics specific to the target, like their interest in basketball, before meeting them. And pick up on cues in conversation and body language, such as if they're not vibing with a topic at hand, you may want to change it or even back off. Now for your physical appearance. Your hair should be short if possible or tightly wound so it doesn't get caught on objects or grabbed. Don't wear jewelry unless it's magnetic so it can be easily removed. If you have any tattoos, make sure it's hidden to avoid being identified. I talk more about this in How to Be a Master of Disguise. Wear comfortable clothing like a t-shirt and sweatpants with sneakers. However, if this is not proper attire, you want to compromise. Like clothing that is flexible, enough to allow you to move freely, shoes with insoles and great grip, and if you are going to wear heels, don't. Flats are a better option. As for external items, such as wallets, clutch, purses, bags, etc., you should avoid any objects that need to be held by one or both hands or can easily fall out of your pockets. Bags are a better option, and for a smaller choice, a fanny pack is more efficient as it attaches to your body and can be zipped up, allowing you to run away and even fight without anything falling out. It's also useful to keep anywhere from $200 to $500 on you, separate from your wallet or bag. This would be emergency money, such as if you got robbed, it should be able to cover anything from a bus or train ticket to a one night stay at a motel. It should be kept hidden on your body such as an athletic cup pocket of compression pants. Some of it should be cash, preferably in $20 bills, and the rest a gift card paid for with cash so there are no traces of you. As for what to keep in your bag or purse, you want to keep some cash on you and preferably a fake ID, so if it does get stolen, it can't be traced back to you. You also want to keep a little bit of food and water, like a couple of protein bars or cliff bars, and as for the water, a plastic water bottle might be better, but the best could be a bladder bag. And with it, you want to keep some liquid IV for some micronutrients. You would also want to keep a change of clothes on you, though if it's winter time, it may not be possible as they're too big to be kept in a small bag. Something else to keep in the bag is an external phone, like a burner phone, which is a phone that usually does not have any GPS or connects to the internet. Think flip phone or track phone that should really only be used for calling people and maybe even texting people and it should be cheap enough so that it can be thrown away if it's been compromised. It would also be great to keep a very rudimentary medical kit on you, a couple of bandages, band-aids, neosporin, allergy medication, ibuprofen and really anything else you may think you need. Now this is a pretty basic bag, so you can add some stuff to it if you desire, or even take some out if you think it's unnecessary. Now for places, you want to have a safe house to relax without having the stress 
from the constant lying, fear of being caught, or the feeling of being watched. You can have multiple ones, but you should start at least with your house. First off, improve your home security immediately. I have a video discussing this. You also want to have escape routes that use back doors or windows. Make sure your blinds are closed and doors are locked at all times. It's also good to do an occasional sweep of your house for bugs. Not the creatures, but instead cameras and mics placed inside your home without your knowledge. You can buy a device off of Amazon for a reasonable price and it works by detecting the RF signals the bug emits. Of course, there is going to be room for error as it may not ping the camera or mic if it's turned off or has a passive activator such as sound or motion and as such you have to use your eyes as well. So check up high on the ceiling and down on the floor along with smoke detectors, digital clocks, outlets, pens, etc. Now if you scan over a device like your phone or router it may trigger a sound so it's best to move them or have it turned off. Now realistically you can do this like once every 3 months just for fun as unless you're some high ranking government official in a foreign country it's not a big deal. But if you stay in hotels or airbnbs it wouldn't hurt to check due to a good number of them having the possibility of being bugged. Moving to protect your electronic devices such as phones, laptops, computers, tablets and more. The detector won't be effective in this specific case. Preferably, you'd want to get a brand new device or at least do a factory reset to remove any possible viruses or spyware that could be there. Then you want to have a trusted antivirus protection if it's not already built in turned on along with a firewall. And you want to have complex passwords that are all different from one another with multiple characters, numbers, spaces, etc. You can keep this in an old school way with pen and paper and hide it somewhere that no one ever knows or have a password manager which keeps your data secure as well. You would also want a VPN which encrypts your data and hides your IP address. The VPN should be for all devices. There are free options but not all of them are safe so it's better to go for a paid version. If you watched any YouTube video in the last like 3 or 4 years, you probably heard of Nord or ExpressVPN and so they're probably reliable and those videos have discount codes. For even more anonymity while using the internet, you can use the Tails operating system. Now when you leave your house with any of these devices, it's best to have as little personal data on it as possible, keeping only work or schoolwork on it. The exception of course will be your cell phone as many people including myself can't live without it. In that case it may be best to take a drastic measure and destroy it. Especially if the info on the phone is more important than the huge price tag of the newest smartphone you probably bought. Now before you leave the house make sure you're nice and warmed up. A couple of push ups, a couple of squats, maybe a couple of punches to get you nice and loose and this should also be performed if you have been stationary for a long period of time. When you do leave the house, make sure you're always on alert as you may be followed or just walk into a dangerous scenario. Some examples include never taking the same routes to your house, your work or school, looking for any familiar faces that you don't personally know on these routes or even vehicles. And if you're sitting, make sure to sit against a wall to cover your blind spot but still have enough room to escape, know all the exits of a building you go to, and more. You can find even more detail just by looking up on the internet. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe.